into the blue yonder, all in the name of getting a new idea off the ground and putting it on the world map. I'm on board Aquarius flight 622 to Cape Town. We are at 350,000 feet above the ground, traveling at a speed of about 870 kilometers per hour. The only difference is that this plane is the first in the world to be fully powered by 100% synthetic jet fuel made from coal dug up in the mines of South Africa. An historic moment for many, including two men who normally wear green. This time around, they are talking green. Yeah, hopefully we can get this fuel into all the uh, other commercial air, airplanes and uh, yeah, let's go green and let's help the whole environment out there and hopefully we can keep this planet clean. It's been, you know, I think, wonderfully uneventful. It's just like any other airplane we take off, which just shows the innovation that Tassel has been able to achieve you know, by creating a fully synthetic fuel. So hopefully this is just the beginning. Hopefully we can see this fuel you know, flying all of our airplanes soon. This is really a, a, a groundbreaking uh, opportunity for the aviation business. It is true for the aviation industry. We now know that there are alternatives. Cecil pioneered synthetic jet fuel in the 1990s, and in 1998 it became the first in the world to gain approval for the commercial use of a 50% synthetic jet fuel component. Uh, the product is already in the market in terms of the semi-synthetic fuels product. We're already selling it through uh, the OR Tambo uh, airport. 60% of that product is already in the market. So it's semi-synthetic. But as inventions and experiments go, the company is still far from making the product commercially available. In terms of the fully 100% semi-synthetic uh, product, we're still uh, exploring in terms of how we're actually going to commercialize it. We still have to make sure that we, we go through the necessary approval processes. We need to look at the, 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 the content of the product itself. We need uh, the environmental issues around it. But uh, in the long term, I have no doubt in my mind that we will be uh, uh, marketing it in the, in, the, in, the, in the commercial world. It was a very long journey for the man behind the idea. Pete Rutz, who has been with Sassel all his life. He spent nearly 20 years in the laboratory working on how to make jet fuel from coal. It is the fulfillment of a long journey and the flight that we completed today has, has been that final step in this long process, completing a long journey for Sassel and also for me personally because as I've indicated, this process started 18 years ago and today we closed the book and we're ready for, for fully synthetic jet fuel to go, go to the world. According to Pete Ritz, one of the major challenges they came across was testing the fuel system. To do engine testing on turbine engines is a major operation. Uh, these engines burn a lot of fuel and uh, we had to prepare 1.2 million litres of jet fuel for the for this test. Now, the, the production of the 1.2 million litres of jet fuel in itself was a major challenge uh, because uh, you must rem remember that the Secunda Sinfields refiner hasn't been set up to produce jet fuel. It's set up to produce petrol and diesel and we do produce eliminating paraffin there which closely resembles jet fuel but not jet fuel. So with the support and the true Sassel spirit we set out and we then uh, managed the plants to actually produce this fuel and that was then the first hurdle that was overcome. We managed to meet the specification with a production batch. The next movement was to find people that could do the testing for us and there we again got uh, uh, the support of the South African Airways with their technical group uh, at uh, OR Tambu Airport and I then uh, said that I would do the testing for us. Another test the fuel system had to endure was an emissions test. They found that their jet fuel CO2 emissions were lower than the conventional jet fuel. But Roots added that this isn't the fuel's only environmentally friendly aspect. I think there's, there's two things at stake here. The one is moving to cleaner energy, but the other one is also finding altern alternative sources of energy. Now, as far as the cleaner energy, our fuel, uh, the fuel that we, fully synthetic jet fuel that we produce, is cleaner in, in the application side of it. Sassel is working very hard on the production side of it. As you know, we're starting from coal 
and needed to go through a, an extensive process to actually get to our liquid fields where we still have a lot of challenges uh, getting improvements as far as, as, as uh, the cleanliness and the carbon footprint of our fuel on that side. But we are making progress and we're working hard at that part. The other part is uh, finding ways of producing alternative fuels because the world is short on energy and uh, the predictions are that uh, crude oil uh, will not increase but will decrease. So what will happen is that fuel availability will go down as we go into the future. And with the flight that we have done today, we've demonstrated that you can use coal, you can convert it into a, a jet fuel that's fit for use and that can compete with petroleum derived fuel. Uh, this fuel is such that it's, it's a, a term that they use, it's a drop-in fuel, it's, it's compatible with the system. It looks like petroleum fuel, so the current systems, the engines, the fuel handling systems can handle this fuel. It's not something new, something foreign which is very difficult for the aviation industry to, to, to handle. So, so yes, clean burning, uh, clean fuels, but also making sure that we have enough of that fuel. It's still at its experimental stage, but Sassel hopes that this jet fuel from coal will bring a new dimension to the energy mix. Mm -hmm.